Is it getting better? Or do you feel the same? Will it make it easier on you now? You got someone to blame. You said one love, one life, it's one need in the night. One love that gets you sharing, leaves you darling. If you don't care. from Hebrews, the 10th chapter. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful, and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So do you remember where you were on September 11th, 2001? Do you remember how that day went for you? I remember the morning, as I'm sure we all But I also remember that that evening, I had a job interview. It was my first job interview at a congregation for which I was seeking to be some sort of spiritual guide. I had worked in a congregation prior to this doing mostly social work. This was the first time that I felt like uh, I was being called into sort of a, a more ministerial position. I was applying to be a youth worker, a youth minister at a congregation. And I interviewed 
and for the first time on September 11, 2001. At the tail end of that process, I ended up being called to Advent Lutheran Church in Uniontown, Ohio. And this is a part of the process of my faith story and how I've ended up in this place today. After not more than a couple of years there, I began to feel an even stronger pull towards ministry, but I was sort of confused. I hadn't grown up in the church, and although I identified uh, with Luther and with a lot of Lutheran theology, I had gone to college at a Quaker school, and there was a Quaker congregation uh, hours from here that was bound to shut down in the near future, but that I was so bold as to believe that I could change the world for. Even though it was jumping from a Lutheran church to a Quaker to a friend's congregation, it was another step after a couple of years at this call uh, to, to pursue what it meant to be a pastor. This would be the first time that I would be called pastor by people. And I accepted the call and moved my family to Milan, Ohio. It was uh, disruptive for Kate. She had to leave a job. Uh, it was disruptive for me. Uh, it was part of the process of deciding uh, whether being called to the church is a thing that I am or uh, how all this was going to work. And I had my share of doubts. Along the way, uh, one person came to me from Advent and they brought me this. It is a uh, home communion uh, kit. They weren't sure. Uh, how the theology of a Quaker church looked as opposed to uh, a Lutheran church, and I can't say that I even knew that much about the understanding. But she came to me, and she gave me this, and she told me uh, that she believed uh, that God had called me, and that Kate and I would do well, and this was the place for us. And I know it all sounds kind of trite, uh, but that person at that time was a significant person in my life, and it was a significant moment when she gifted me this. The, kit that I still use for home communions to this day. Earlier this week, uh, this past week, on uh, this past Tuesday, uh, quite suddenly, uh, the woman who gifted me this passed away. I had not spoken to her in quite a while, and I'm not sure if I ever uh, told her how much uh, it meant to me that she was supporting. She was uh, fairly young. Uh, her children are a little bit younger than me. Uh, there were kids that I had in youth group uh, there at Advent, and uh, it hit hard. I'm sharing all this uh, on this Good Friday just to sit with you and to tell you that there are people that listen to the words of Scripture this week and maybe uh, over the course of their lives that are not sure that they actually believe all of the things that they say. They sit in churches and they're not sure if they uh, know what to make of all the theology or the habits or the robing or the not robing or all the things that we do, which is to say, this is a difficult process being faithful and it's filled with doubt. We're not sure that we actually believe all of the uh, words that scripture has to say tonight. We have doubts. There are people who uh, will potentially join me here sitting together, who are deciding right now whether it's even worth digging out or moving into the back of their closet to find an Easter dress or an Easter hat or an Easter tie, if it's even worth the process of digging those things out and getting into the back of their closets and getting that stuff out and getting dressed up to get here uh, this resurrection Sunday. Is it even worth it? to sit again in Easter services. We have our doubts, right? There are people who might be watching this and who are alone and who understand the idea of people who have been meaningful passing away or of loss. There are people who are just worried about Easter brunch. They're just worried if all the ingredients are going to come together and if the family is going to get some of us are just barely showing up. So many days uh, over the course of uh, my time uh, as a person that's been trying to decipher what it means to be a person of faith in this world, I've felt like it's kind of pointless. 
and I've had my doubts. I've known the tune and I've felt utter frustration. And sometimes it's only been by the grace of a certain person at a certain time with a certain smile that's gotten me through. Sometimes that person hasn't showed up and I don't even know how I got through. This is Good Friday. And it's a day of doubt and now it's been a week where I've been thinking again about loss. Some of us are just barely showing up at this point. The burial spices for Jesus' body are in our hands and they're in our midst. And some of us are just barely showing up. But then again, of course, sometimes just showing up is all it takes to experience, to witness the miracle happening. Let it be so, gracious God. May we rise again together in May you take whatever we have left and make something of it. May you call the people of St. Stephen, the people of faith at Advent, the people of faith in, in Milan and throughout Ohio and the world together. And may you make something of us yet. This feels like a tomb and we have our doubts and some of us are just barely showing up. But then again, sometimes that's all it takes to witness a miracle. Is it getting better? Or do you feel the same? Will it make it easier on you now? You got someone to blame, you say.